the fourteenth Sunday after Pentecost, year B. From the Song of Solomon. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. In the name of the Beloved, even the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings for this week, and especially the one from the Song of Solomon, speak of abundance. A desert land in springtime overflows with the fruitfulness of creation. Generosity is the only reasonable response to this kind of overwhelming fruitfulness. And yet, we humans struggle to embrace the implications of divine fruitfulness and the generosity to which it calls us. Our first reading speaks of sexual longing. The speaker remains inside the house while the beloved is gazing in. The speaker remains hidden despite longing to follow. In our psalm, innuendos of sexual prowess are only very thinly veiled with a call to sound moral judgment. What would it mean to take these innuendos seriously, to yearn for God the way the lovesick yearn for a glimpse of their beloved, to think of moral prowess the way we think of sexual prowess? The Epistle of James refers to us as the first fruits of God's creatures, to whom God has given birth, having implanted herself with the word of truth. How's that as a way to conceive, pardon the pun, of soul searching? The alternative is to persist with our own implantation of anger, which bears no fruit but sordidness and the rank growth of wickedness. Jesus calls us to choose the lover to whom we will cling, whether tradition that focuses on outward forms or God who directs our focus inward, to acknowledge the sinfulness within our hearts. When we use our traditions to distract ourselves from our sinfulness, we allow the sin to remain, defiling our hearts, taking up the place in our affections that is meant for God. Let us therefore acknowledge and wash away whatever defiles us, and rise up from our places of hiding, and come with our God. Let us rejoice in the fruit of our union with God's truth, not keeping it to ourselves alone, but sharing generously with others. For generosity is the only reasonable response to this kind of overwhelming fruitfulness. In the name of our beloved, even the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.